In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, welcome to our online act of worship for the first Sunday after Trinity. Since Advent, we have followed Jesus' life, death and resurrection, and have celebrated his ascension, the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, and the wonder of God as Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In this second half of the Christian year, the focus changes to our own lives. Our readings and prayers challenge us to think about how we can follow the way of Jesus Christ. Today's themes are endurance and going out to do his work in the world. Perhaps these themes are very appropriate and we hope that we will bear this in mind as we gradually come out of lockdown. Friends in the Saffron Warden and Villages team ministry, welcome to All Saints here in Great Chesterford. Please do follow this service by downloading an order of service from one of our websites and you'll find activities for children there also. I'm pleased to announce that this morning Reverend John Risby will be reading the gospel and preaching for us. So thank you John for agreeing to help us this morning. Last week, I asked for the names of the three aspects of God that make up the Holy Trinity. They were, of course, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. A big shout out to the Game family and to Ed Jones for their correct answers. This week, I would like to know what three things did Jesus do in all the towns and villages that he visited? Please do email me the answer for a shout out next week. So let us begin our worship. We gather together, united in purpose though separate in place, in the name of God, our creator, redeemer and sustainer. We sing our opening hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Let us pray. We have come together as the family of God in this community and these communities. And especially we thank you, Father, for giving us strength and courage to do your work in your world. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praises with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come now to our prayers of penitence when we say sorry to God. God, our Father, forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us put away all anger and malice and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us love and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we hear God's forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together that great hymn of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect, the special prayer for this day, the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ your Son. Amen. Now over to Reverend John Risby, who will read our Gospel reading and preach for us. Thank you, John. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him, and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Well, we may still be in a lockdown, albeit with a little bit of relaxation these days. But it's good to read that in those days our Lord Jesus Christ had no restrictions. In verse 35, he was able to go through all the towns and all the villages with his public ministry continuing. His ministry of teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease 
and sickness. Crowds everywhere. We're not quite used to that in our villages, are we? Crowds everywhere. And it's a big if, if we ever were confronted with such crowds, I'm pretty sure we would be the ones who would feel harassed and helpless. But Jesus' heart went out to them. He wasn't harassed and helpless. He was concerned for others. And we read here that he had compassion on them because he saw them to be distressed and dejected, harassed, harassed and helpless, just like sheep without a shepherd. And this led Jesus uh, to do two things. First of all, he told his disciples, look, pray earnestly that the Lord will send more labourers into the harvest, more workers into the harvest field. And that's something we continue to need to do today, isn't it? To pray for more. And we're not talking here just about more vicars, more clergy. We're talking about more Christians who will be uh, have that same compassion, that same concern for others and wanting to live a life of service as disciples of Jesus. Chapter 10 then, Jesus, the second thing Jesus does is to call these 12 men to be disciples and apostles for him. Now here's a little test for you afterwards today, or sometime later today, without looking, see if you can name those 12. I think we're all pretty good at the first few, Peter, James and John, and maybe the last one too, Judas Iscariot. But it's always a bit tricky in the middle, isn't it? Try to remember the, the others. See if you can do that. But let's notice what happens. And I think there are two sort of key phrases that uh, struck me as I read this earlier this week. First of all, in chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples to be with him. They, he called them to be with him. And then he gave them, as we read, the authority to go and act in his name and indeed to continue the very same ministry that he was doing himself. Now, it is fair to say that the apostles were in a unique situation and we can't possibly expect to emulate them in all the things that they did. Nevertheless, there is a principle here that does uh, speak to us and apply it to us. For isn't it true that we firstly, as followers of Jesus, need to come regularly and often to him? This is in order that we may learn of him. We may learn of his love and his compassion and his purposes because it was after they came to him that Jesus appointed them and equipped them. But then comes the second word, come to, they came to him and then they were told to go and to share with others. There is, at the very end of the gospel, a phrase that uh, I think is very telling and perhaps often gets overlooked in this reading. It's this, isn't it? Freely you have received, freely give. It is as we come to Jesus that we may quietly listen to his words and become more and more aware of how much we have received from his hands as we speak with him. And as we become more aware of how much we received, then perhaps he will speak to us again to say, right, now freely you've received, freely give. Play your part in the kingdom of God, proclaiming the kingdom of God, where you live, where you work, the people you come into touch with. We have our part to play in showing the love of Christ. 
came across a lovely quote this week uh, from Shakespeare. A little bit of culture here, try and show off. But this comes from Shakespeare, but it's a lovely little quote that seems relevant. How far that little candle throws its beams. How far that little candle throws its beams. So shines a good deed in a weary world. We all have different callings, different opportunities, but all of us have the opportunity to share Christ's love in small ways with those around us and thus play our part. Freely we have received, freely let us go. Let's pray for each other this week that this may be so. Amen. Thank you, John, for sharing God's word with us today. We now listen to some reflection music. So we come now to the point in our service where we share our faith together with the words of the creed. So let us declare our faith together. We say, we believe and trust in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, us with, uh, who strengthens us with power from on high. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we come now before God with our prayers of intercession. So let us pray. Father of all, we pray for your world and for all its peoples in all countries. Help us to value every human being, knowing that each one is made in your image, and help us to bring justice where your love has not been known. Give wisdom and integrity to all leaders of nations, and inspire them to safeguard their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world and in this team ministry of Saffron Walden and its villages we ask for your blessing on choosing the next Bishop of Chelmsford and the process for appointing a new team rector. Give us the vision to live as your people 
and give us your energy as we prepare for the day when we may worship again in our churches. May we, like your apostles, be strong to proclaim your good news, and we thank you for all those down the centuries who have brought the faith to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the coronavirus continues to affect all our lives, we hold before you all who have suffered from it, all who are lonely or anxious or fearful or dying, all whose lives have been changed and have lost loved ones. We pray for all hospital staff and carers combating the virus, all those working to find a vaccine and a cure, and all key workers and volunteers, for teachers and students at school and universities, and for all whose livelihood has been threatened by the lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities in our town and villages. We thank you for the many acts of kindness we have each experienced from others and pray that we too may be a blessing to others. We hold before you our families, our friends and neighbours and especially those in need of any kind and those we cannot visit. And we name them before you now in the silence of our hearts. Hold them always in your loving embrace and be with them always too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, I encourage you to offer to God any other needs on your heart. And we end by sharing the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's share God's peace together. I do encourage you, if there are others in your household, please do share the peace with them. But do hold in your minds all those who we cannot physically be with at the moment and those of your loved ones. So, we are the body of Christ in the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Do offer one another a sign of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, let's ask God's grace for the week ahead. Heavenly Father, sustain us in our joys and in our anxieties. Enfold us in your peace in our waking and in our sleeping. And may we know your presence with us now and always. In the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we sing our closing hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded.
Thank you once again for being with us online this morning. Don't forget to check our websites, our bulletins and the grapevine to see what else is happening in our churches. Another big thank you to all those people that have helped make this service possible. Particularly I'd like to thank Ollie King, Reverend John Risby, Reverend Paula Griffiths, Martin Hugel and of course our wonderful musicians. Do be in contact if you need anything at all any clergy support we are here for you and a final blessing before we go on our way may the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with us now and evermore and may we go in the peace and love of christ to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen I shall see you all very soon. Take care of yourself and stay safe.